Greetings, one and all, and welcome to episode number 33 of Thoughts and Hunches, Making Money in Bunches and Sucker Punches. Your boy Stoney is back for the 33rd time welcoming all of his fellow scumbags, hustlers, lowlifes, hoodlums, fienders, degenerates. Glad to have you back. And this is the last video that we're making until August. This is the end of our season, the end of my season, the end of your season of what? Well, actually, you can watch me anytime you want. Just go back on YouTube. But it's the end of my season. Uh, for I like to think that I have teachers' hour, teachers' hours. Although I end a month earlier, I end in April. Um, I won't be back until August. And if you want to stay up to date and know when I'm back. Make sure to click the subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner. Spread the word to anybody that likes to get down and get a little action on these games. We're down to the last game. I mean, what can we say? It's national championship time. Before we get to that, let's go over some numbers, okay? A 1-3 day on Final Four Saturday is certainly not what we expected. We had both dogs and both unders. Both games went over. And we split the sides. We did have UCLA, which was a lock. Well, now we look back on it, but pretty much the whole game, it was never in doubt that they weren't going to cover. I mean, they damn near won that thing. And at 14 and a half, we were in good shape. Where Houston, on the other hand, <laughs> didn't treat me quite so well. They just, <laughs> I mean, that game was over 10 minutes into the game. Some might say even before that. Uh, Baylor just absolutely boat raced them. So one and three on Saturday is what we did. And here are our numbers. These are the final numbers I'm going to give you for the season. Great numbers. Very, very good numbers. Some are great. But for the season, we were very, very good. Uh, 39, 28, and 1 in the NCAA tournament. It's not terrible. It's not great, but it's not terrible. 58.21%. Take that every single day. College basketball for the season, 185, 123, and 4. That's 60.06%. Again, top notch. You get over 57. You get over 56, you're doing well. 57 is very well. You get into the 60s, forget about it. And every, and like I say, every single one of my picks on these videos, documented. I give you the picks before the games start. I don't wait until the game's over and say, hey, I went 4-0 when I really went 2-2. Two and two. No, no, no. I went one and three on Saturday in the final four. I'll own that. I don't like it, but I'll own it. But the one was, <laughs> wow. Anyway, um, overall for the season, 58.01%. Just over 58. That's 34, 249, and 7. So the only way we finish under 58% is if we lose both sides here tonight. Or on the national championship game, excuse me. NFL, 51.97%. Clearly a low mark of our season. We'd have been a hell of a lot closer to 60%. Actually, we'd be over 60% if we did, if we took out all of our NFL picks. We'd be over 60%. NCAA football, 62.14%. That's just Hall of Fame shit right there. Because that's what I do. I deliver you picks. I deliver you winners on a weekly basis. During this NCAA tournament, it's been crazy. We've been doling out uh, picks for, you know, uh, videos twice a week. So, you know, just to keep you guys interested. And we bet every single game. Every single big game in the tournament. Except for the first four. We didn't bet those. But we did get every game from the field of 64. Well, the field of 64 has been reduced to two. We're at the national championship game, and realistically, nobody's surprised. The two best teams in the country are facing off, and it's kind of the way it should be. 
for all you people in your brackets and, oh, I had upsets, I had upsets. The upsets don't mean shit. When you come down to it, chalk rules the day. And the two best teams are here for a reason. They're the two best teams. Combined, two losses all season. Both by Baylor. Excuse me, three losses. They had one in the tournament. Three in the Big 12 tournament. Three losses. That's it. All by Baylor. Right? That's pretty remarkable. Baylor had that hiccup when they came out of COVID. Uh, and they didn't look good. But they got it back together. And, man, they really, really, really put together a show on Saturday. Well, here we go. Let's get to the picks. Four months ago, these teams were supposed to play each other, right? Almost to the day. Four months ago, eight, December 5th, they were supposed to meet. They were scheduled to meet. Non-conference game. That's what Gonzaga does. Gonzaga scheduled this year against West Virginia, against Iowa, against Baylor, against top-notch talent because every year come tournament time, they get knocked down a little bit for their strength of schedule because the WCC isn't in the class of, say, the Big 12 where Baylor is, which I, I call the best conference in the country this year. So Gonzaga schedule's big. These two teams were supposed to play back on April 5th. Baylor had a COVID outbreak, and it took them about four weeks to get their to get everything back in order, they started playing again, and they struggled out of the gate. So it took them a while to get going. But make no mistake about it, Baylor absolutely 1,000% deserves to be in this game. Baylor's road to the tournament, Hartford, Wisconsin, Villanova, Oregon State, and Houston have all fallen at the wayside thanks to Baylor. All right? And they've done it. Baylor's done it with an average average winning mark of 15.2 points per game. They only had really one game that was close, and even that wasn't really that close. It was cl They were trailing at halftime against Villanova, but all the other games, it was, it was Baylor. It was all Baylor doing their thing. Oregon State hung with them but you always kind of knew that they weren't going to win. Houston was never in that game. Baylor's looking for their first title. They've, they've, they've never won a title. The only other time that they were in the national championship was in 1948. Yes, that's 73 years ago. They lost the NCAA championship to Kentucky, and they're back for the first time since. They that the game against Houston in the Final Four was one of the most impressive performances I've seen in a Final Four. Uh, the, the most impressive performance I've seen was in the NCAA Championship game in 1990 when UNLV beat Duke by 30 in the ch in the title game. Still the most uh, lopsided NCAA Championship game ever. We ain't going to have that come Monday night. Neither one of these teams is going to win by 30. There's no way. Um, Baylor came out. They shot the ball well. They defended well. And they beat Houston at their own game. Houston rebounds well, gets to the offensive glass exceptionally well, and they just couldn't do anything right, and they couldn't slow down Baylor's offense. The offense was rolling they went to the bench, the bench was rolling, and they got plenty of contributions. They're 5-0 and in this tournament, average winning percent, 15.2 percent, or 15.2 points per game. Like I said, they're 19-10 and 10 against the spread this year. Solid numbers. Really, really, really solid numbers. But in all of their 28 or all of their previous 29 games, they've been a favorite. This is the first time as a dog. They don't care. They, I'll bet you they kind of like the fact that they're a dog in this game because it gives them more of a chip on their shoulder, more of something to fight for. 
So is their first game as a dog. They're also four and one against the spread in the tournament. All right. They've they've done it easily. And it's you know, it it all starts with their offense, right? But but again, like I said, make no mistake, these guys they defend like son of bitches. Um Jared Butler leads the way, right? He's the he's the big twelve player of the year. Average 16.5 points a game this year, just top notch. Davion Mitchell, right behind him at 16.14 points per game. Uh, their third starting guard is Macy Oteague. He scores 16 points per game. So, you know, all three of them, or excuse me, Davion Mitchell is 14 points per game. Macy Oteague is 16 points per game. So, I mean, those three combined are averaging 46 points a game. So you get that much production out of three players. You don't really need the others to do much, but the other guys do plenty much. Adam Flagler comes off the bench to give him a four-guard offense. He, he gives you nine points a game. Matthew Meyer, the shooter and the dribbler who goes 6'8", he averages eight points a game. And then there's the big man. And it's, I, I always have a trouble, I always have trouble with this. Jonathan Champka Chachua. Champka Chachua. That's him. Six points per game, but he's the big man. He rebounds, he fights, he guards the opponent's big man. And these guys have been spectacular in the tournament. They've been absolutely great. De um, defensively, they're only, like I said, they're only allowing 60 points a game. And that's that's just top notch. Now, in all fairness, the only offense they really played in this tournament that can score it w was Villanova in the Sweet 16 round. And Nova gave them all they could handle in the first half before Baylor put the clamps down in the second half. But... 60 points per game is still 60 points per game, right? And that's all they allow, right? So Baylor Baylor is going to be in this. Baylor's not going to get blown out, and they're not going to win this game by big either. Gonzaga, on the other hand, they come in looking for history, period. Norfolk State, Oklahoma, Creighton, and both the L.A. schools, USC and UCLA last night, all fell under the spell of a 31-0 and juggernaut. They've been the best team all year. Some might say they were the best team last year, heading into the COVID tournament. I did. Had that tournament gone off last year, they were my pick to win the whole thing. We all know the numbers. Only two games this year have not been decided by double figures. The second one was yesterday in the Final Four. They're trying to catch 1976 Indiana as the last un unbeaten team to run the table and win it all. And it starts with, I mean, yesterday's game was a classic, period. It was the best basketball game I've ever seen, period. UCLA play, did everything they could. You all know my affinity towards towards the Bruins. That's why I had them yesterday, and they covered easily. And then as the game wore on, I got greedy, and I wanted them to win. I didn't have – I have rather large balls, but they weren't big enough to take UCLA on the money line. Anyway, that game, UCLA shot 57% from the floor, which was a season high that Gonzaga allowed anybody to shoot. And they and UCLA shot 48% from three, which is ridiculous. They did everything right, and they still couldn't win. Jalen Suggs, the miracle shot at the buzzer, set off cheers in the Pacific Northwest. And it was as heartbreaking of a loss it was for UCLA. Bruin fans really didn't hang their heads because they know who they know exactly who they lost to. And this Gonzaga team, I said during my video that they were going to score their 85 points. And they did. They scored 93. They do that every single night. They lead the nation in scoring. They do it for a reason. All right? They're, they also, just like 
Baylor are 5-0 and in the tournament, but their average win is by 19 points per game. Last night was their only game that they didn't cover, so they're 4-1 and against the number in the tournament. The last time they were in the, in the finals was 2017 when they lost to North Carolina. I said this the other day, but I'm going to repeat it. If you haven't seen that game, just go back and, you know, you, I'm sure you can YouTube it. The final five minutes of that game, if you don't have a rooting interest for Carolina or Gonzaga, just watch the game and watch the way the whistles blew. There were some phantom calls, and there were some and there were some questionable calls, and they all went in the way of Carolina. They won that game on the foul line, and they won by five. Um, they're sixteen, thirteen, and two against the number this season. That's solid. It's not great. It's not as good as Baylor's nineteen and ten, but sixteen, thirteen, and two. Every game they've been a favorite, just like Baylor. They were 5-1 and one against the spread versus top 25 opponents this year. And that's, that's saying something. They're 4-1 and one against the spread in the tournament, like I said, with UCLA being the only one. And their players are like a who's who of college basketball. A bunch of these guys are going to be in the NBA. Baylor has probably four guys that will be in the NBA. Um, Gonzaga, their starting five will all be playing in the NBA at some point. Um, it, it it starts with big man Drew Timmy. He's been scoring 19 points a game, but he's been scoring 22 points a game in the tournament. He stepped his game up. He's using both hands, and he is going to be a matchup nightmare for Baylor. Uh, Champka Chachua is going to have to step up his game and play Timmy tough because Timmy generally doesn't get into foul trouble, although he did in the national semifinals against UCLA, but he didn't foul out. He took a charge as the buzzer sounded at the end of regular season, and Timmy has been their go-to guy during the tournament. But let's not forget, guy who's been kind of flying under the radar, hasn't played great in the tournament, but he's still a first-team All-American and their leading scorer at 19 points a game, and that's Corey Kispert. Kispert, is a small forward. He might he might even be a two in the NBA, although he goes six seven. But make no mistake, he can stroke it, he can dribble it, he can defends well. Kispert is the total package. He's he's a surefire lottery pick. Come next uh whenever the NBA draft is in the next couple months. Jalen Suggs, arguably the best player in the nation as a freshman. Him and uh, Evan Mobley and Luca Garza are going to be in. Uh, they're going to go one, two, three in the in the draft. In not necessarily in that order, but nobody would be surprised if Suggs goes number one. He's their point guard. Fourteen points per game. He rebounds. He defends. He he assists. He does everything, and he hits game winners from just inside a half court to win the national semifinals too. Uh, Jalen Suggs, you know, there's just nothing more, you know, I mean, this guy could have been the starting quarterback at Ohio State, but instead he decided to go to Gonzaga instead. He's just ridiculous. Joel Ayayi, he led the way in the first half in that UCLA game, came out on fire, scored 22 points. He averages 12 points a game. But he's another excellent defender and a slasher. He plays the two. And he he's going to be tasked with trying to defend Butler, Mitchell, or Teague. One of those three. Because Suggs will have one and Kispert will have one. Or maybe Nemhart might have one. Nemhart, uh, Andrew Nemhart is the fifth starter. He averages nine points a game. Uh, the transfer from Florida came on this season and is just been fantastic buying into Mark Few's culture. Um, Gonzaga's offense is so intricate in the way that they cut and they do everything right and they don't turn the ball over 
and they play the game as a team game, the way the game's supposed to be played. The only real matchups, clear outs, one on ones that they do is when they dump it inside to Timmy. Everything else is revolved on motion and it keeps the defense on their toes. Now, Baylor's defense is always on their toes. So Baylor is going to show up and they're going to defend and they're going to play really well. Now, can they hold Gonzaga to let to 85 or less? The odds say no. But if you've seen Baylor play, would anybody be really surprised if they held them below 80? Well, I would. <laughs> I just don't see it happening. Um, these two teams have played each other five times in the past. Gonzaga's 5-0. and Baylor's never beat Gonzaga. And the last time they met was two years ago, the last tournament in 2019. And Gonzaga beat Baylor pretty handily, 83-71 to in the second round. So Baylor could be looking for a little retribution. Now, again, back to Baylor's defense at 60 points per game. They're legit, but so is Gonzaga's, a very unappreciated defense, which only allows 63 points per game. Baylor shoots the three better than any team in the nation. They're going to have to continue their hot shooting because they were lights out against Houston. And they're going to have to continue to do that. If they have an off night, they're doomed. It, that's, that's the reason I'm going to go with Gonzaga. I'm 5-0 and betting on Gonzaga, betting on a Gonzaga game in this tournament. I'm 4-0 with Gonzaga. I'm 1-0 against Gonzaga. For some reason, I, I, I seem to have that feeling in the national semis that the Bruins would play them tough. Not that Baylor won't. But at four and a half points, I like Gonzaga. I'm going to lay the four and a half, and that's your winner, period. Gonzaga is going to win the tournament. They're going to go down in history as one of the greats, as they, do, as they will deserve to. And people will look back on the tournament run and say, well, UCLA was the only team that really gave them a game, especially if they win this game by double digits. As far as the total goes... It's 159 and a half. <laughs> That's extremely high. That's saying 81 to 80. <laughs> that big numbers. 80, 80 to 80. Right? Can they can they reach that high? I say no. Now, if this game finishes 90 to 85, no one no one would be surprised. Nobody. And that's clearly an over. That's an easy over. I'm going to roll with the under just because the way they've both teams defend. Now, both teams can score. I, I, I realize this, especially Gonzaga, but both teams can defend. And that's going to keep this game under the total, but not by much. I see it somewhere along the lines of 87 to 77, right? 87 to 80. Nah, well, wait, hold on, no. No, that's wrong. <laughs> Excuse me, but that's totally wrong. Um, it's more along the lines of 81 to 71. That's what I had it at, right? Around there. 83, 74, somewhere around there, just to keep it under that number. So there's your picks. That's what I've got. You can come back and you can laugh and you can comment and you can call me a moron or you can say, Stoney, you made me a lot of money and you can donate. <laughs> you can drop me some money and say, hey, Stoney, you made me a lot of money this year. Here's, you know, a couple dollars for your time. I wouldn't give it back. But I, but uh, before I go, I just want to thank everybody for watching and coming along this ride with me. It's been a great run this year. We didn't really, I didn't really start doing it until early on in the NFL season, but I didn't do it from the start of the NFL season. Although now it, it will be a weekly thing. Come back in August and we'll have picks out every Friday to get you ready for the weekend, college football and NFL. 
And when college basketball starts in November, we'll definitely have plenty of uh, those selections going. Those are the th those are the three sports that we bet on. Um, October also, I will be doing MLB playoff bets. Uh, usually, I do series bets each team during the series, and then. Whatever night I'm posting a video, I'll have some uh, picks for the next day's games during the playoffs. So I will have MLB playoff games. Not every game, but I will have some just to keep, to mix it up a little bit as the monotony of football, football, football will just take over the fall. So that's it again. Thank you from the bottom of my heart to my Purple family. You guys rock. Shout out. Major, major, major shout outs to the brother sister combo of Pete and KM. You guys, I don't remember exactly whose idea it was to get me on video to get this ugly mug in front of you. Uh, whether it was Pete or KM, uh, but they're so much alike that it wouldn't surprise me if it was one if it was both of them or one of them told the other and when i spoke with them they've been nothing short of fantastic the whole grease is the word newsletter has been it's been my joy and my honor to be a part of if you haven't checked it out look it up mason street productions grease is the word newsletter you want to know more about it let me know shoot me a comment here and i can send you a link it's been awesome to be a part of, and Pete and KM, you guys got a, uh, beers and shots on me <laughs> next time I'm back home in the Bay. Hopefully, hopefully in the summer before the football season kicks off, because I like doing videos here in my home with the banner behind me. No offense to my brother's house, but I did do one video uh, a month ago from my brother's house, and those pics turned out to be awful. <laughs> so again, Pete and KM, you guys rock. Um, so in closing, I just want to let you guys in with my four secrets that I give you at the end of every uh, video. Number one, there's money on the streets that can't be ignored. Number two, if you're going to win big, you got to bet big. Number three, for me, the action is the juice. And finally, good luck to you. See you in the fall.